Hey there, this is Apostolic Praise 101 Vocals. This is a crash course in vocals. In this course, we're going to be teaching you how to teach other people their parts for different songs, um, how the soprano, how the alto, how the tenor part work in music. Um, I do the parts at our church, um, our church here in Georgia. I've also done the parts at other churches, and um, it's something that you can learn how to do, something that you can learn how to teach yourself to listen to songs and to tell what the parts are doing. That's basically how I learned. Um, I listened to different songs, different CDs. I sat down at the piano and I would pick out the part of the soprano, write it down, pick out the part of the alto, write it down, pick out the part of the tenor. Eventually I did that enough where I got to the place where I didn't have to write it down but I could actually hear it um, and it's something that only comes with practice and with also an understanding of some basic chord structure and music theory. In this course, we're going to examine a little bit of both. Um, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to email me or to give me a call. And our information is on our website at apostolicpraiseschoolofmusic.com. Okay, great. So let's get into um, choir vocals. How do they work? Um, what are the different parts? What are important to learn? Pretty much every style of music, Southern Gospel, um, Black Gospel, you need to know how to teach um, choir parts. You need to know how how they work if you're going to not just sing unison with your choir. And basically the way it works is you have soprano. Um, now any one of the different three main parts can be a um, can be a lead part. And what I mean by that is it's the part that's singing the melody of the song. It's the lead of that song. Um, for the most part, soprano is usually the lead part. They're usually the ones that are singing the melody. But occasionally, um, tenor, more often than alto, occasionally tenor will also be the lead part. In other words, they're singing the melody for the song. Um, we're actually going to look at a song here shortly, just to give you a quick example of how this works. Um, now, usually how it's wor it works is the soprano is layered at, I think, like this, at level one. The alto is the part right below the soprano. And then the tenor is the part right below the alto. There's three main parts. If you know anything about music or about chords, a chord has three main parts. And what you're basically doing when you're when a choir, you're teaching a choir to sing a part, you're teaching a small group of people to sing parts, you're basically teaching um, teaching them to all sing a chord together, whether that's a major chord, whether that's a minor chord. And there is a small difference. Um, in this course, we're going to kind of take it a little bit slowly. We're going to try to just start from the ground up, and we're going to teach you also what major and minor chords are, because some of you may not have an ex may not have any idea what those are. Basically, in music, you have two main types of chords. You have major and minor chords. Major are the ones that sound happy. So, for example, if you had a C major chord, and I'm going to assume you know the notes on the piano here. If you don't, feel free to sign up for Apostolic Praise 101, um, which is our crash course in piano. It's very important to have basic concepts of how um, music works and how chord structure works before you go to teaching parts. Um, so you have um, a C major chord here, which is C, E, G. Okay, so basically how it would work is the soprano, if they were singing this chord all together, they would be singing the G, the alto would be right below them singing the E, and the tenor would be right below that singing the C. Okay, um, if you were playing a minor chord of some sort, like a D minor for example, um, the, the sopranos could potentially be singing an A. If the sopranos are singing an A, and you want to sing parts, you know automatically, if you know that you're playing the song, you know the song uses a D minor chord, you can know automatically that the F is going to be the alto note and that the D is going to be the tenor note. Now how do you know that? You know that because you're playing the song, the song, the chord, the chord the musicians are playing is a D minor, and so it's stacked, it's layered. The soprano is always going to be the highest note, the alto is always going to be the next note down, and the tenor is always going to be the next note down. Okay, so let's take a quick song here. For example, let's learn um, Can't Stop Praising His Name. Very um, common, popular song that most people know. If you don't know it, feel free to YouTube it. Once again, it's Can't Stop Praising His Name, and um, it's a faster song. But the reason we're going to look at it is it's very simple in nature. It's going to give you just a basic concept and example of how parts work in church music. And uh, we'll be back here in just a minute to show you this song. Okay, great. So welcome back. We're going to learn Can't Stop Praising His Name. Now I'm going to run through the chords of this, and like I said before, you may or may not know how chords work and how to play chords. If not, um, I would really advise taking AP 101 because it's important to know 
how AP 101 Crash Course in Piano, it's important to know how music works. If you don't want to take the entire course, at the very, very least, you need to take the first two free lessons, which are completely free. Just go sign up and fill out the registration form on our website. Um, but you really need to get a basic concept of how chords work. At least take the first two lessons, which once again are free, and those will teach you the basic concepts of how major and minor chords work. Um, I don't want to bore anybody who's wanting to learn how to teach vocals, um, but, but already knows how to play piano, which most folks probably will if you're going to learn vocals. Um, so, can't stop praising his name. Basic chord of this um, song, the, basically the chord progression is, you know, can't stop praising his name. Starts on D minor. We're in the key of D minor. You're going to go down to B flat, to G minor, okay, to A, and then back to D minor. And some people may play this a little bit differently, but that is the basic um, chord structure and chord progression of the song. So D minor, can't stop praising his name. B flat, can't stop praising his name. Can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Okay, so basically here's how it's going to work. The soprano is going to sing um, the A note here. Just as an example, you know, there's different, different ways you can do the parts, but just to keep it simple, the soprano would be, Can't stop praising his name, I just can't stop praising his name. chords are going to match, for the most part, what the parts are doing. Um, but you're going to go, um, just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Okay, so you have soprano, just pretty much channel the same note the whole time. But, can't stop praising his name, I just can't stop praising his name, I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Okay, the alto is going to be right below that. Can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, Jesus. One more time. Can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, I just can't stop. Praising his name, Jesus. Now you'll notice if you're an alto, that's really low for you. I'm singing it lower as a as an octave lower because I don't have a very high voice here. If you're an alto, you'll actually be singing it higher. Actually, be up there, the ladies. If you're a, if you're an alto, you won't be. Can't stop, which is where I'm actually singing it. Can't stop. That's where you need to be up there, okay? Um, if you're a tenor, you're gonna be up right here. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. All right. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop. bit high for tenors but not too bad um, so you'll be at that D once again soprano A alto F tenor D I kind of give you a quick example of how the chords layer okay now there are a lot of different other parts we could go into we have the baritone you have the bass part that's not the point of this course the point of this course is to just teach you the three main parts to help people out that are wanting to start a choir that have no idea what they're doing and just need a little bit of extra help. Um, a lot of songs you'll notice are not going to have parts, or there will be a miss, a mix and a match. Part of the song will be unison, part of the song will be parts. A good example of this is Here I Am to Worship. Um, you're basically the verse one, light of the world, you step down in the darkness, open my eyes, let me see. That's all unison, you're all singing unison there. Everybody's singing the exact same note, so. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. You're all singing the exact same note. It's all going to be unison, whether you're soprano, whether you're alto, whether you're tenor. The tenors, obviously, are going to be a little lower because they're not ladies, don't have high voices. They'll be down here. Light of the world. Instead of up here with the ladies, with the sopranos and the altos. Okay, so, um, but once you get out of the verse one, you're going to notice it goes into a chorus. And the chorus is going to be parts. And you can, the way you can hear that is, you'll hear the separation of parts when you listen to the song on a CD or a track or choir, somebody else singing it, and you'll hear in the parts, you'll hear that, okay, the sopranos, the altos, the tenors, they're not singing all the same note here, so it's not unison, it's all parts, and usually the sign that we give for that is just simple, when you want to go to parts, you hold up three fingers, at least we do at our church, unison, you can do whatever you want, we do a, um, two fingers like this, like a U, um, to show that everybody's singing together, everybody's singing in unison together. 
you can make up and do whatever signs you want to do. That's just for how we use it. Um, so that should give you a basic idea of how choir parts work. Of course, um, additional lessons. We're going to show you a couple of different songs, more advanced stuff than just can't stop praising his name. But that's the basic gist, uh, gist of how it works. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or call me, visit our website. And um, once again, we'll see you here back in lesson two.